From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Otto, the innkeeper. I have a telephone call for you from Police Inspector Honegger in Zurich. I will put him on. Go ahead. Hi, Inspector. Any line on Sebastian's killer? Uh, not yet, Herr Dollar. That also means no line on the stolen diamonds, huh? I do not know. You recall the picture postcard Sebastian gave you before his death? The picture of the Kleibach Inn? Sure. He said it was part of a key to the location of the diamonds. That's why I came up here to the inn. But I haven't found any sign of them. We have been watching Sebastian's apartment. This morning, the second part of the key arrived in his mailbox. Another postcard? Yes. I am sending it on to you. See what you can make of it. Looks like we're in the middle of a game of some kind. Have you been able to locate the missing murder suspect, Ilse Schaefer? I've not only located her, in five minutes I'm going skiing with her. What? Herr Dollar, do you think that is wise for you? It's one way of finding out if she ties in. I just hope it doesn't turn out to be the hard way. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Global Casualty in Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the picture postcard matter. Location, Clybox, Switzerland. Expense account continued. <music> Item 7, $3 American, rental on ski equipment. Ilsa Schaefer told me she'd come to Clybox to go skiing, and I wanted to make sure that was her reason. There'd been too many coincidences about her to suit me, First, the way she'd popped into my cab in Zurich, then popped out two blocks later, leaving her purse behind. Right after that, I'd been jumped by a strong arm who was sure Ilsa had passed the stolen diamonds to me. And now she turns up suddenly at the Kleibach Inn. I spotted her waiting for me at the ski lift. Come on, Johnny, you're late. In her skiing outfit, she could have passed for Miss Switzerland. But one nasty little thought kept coming into my brain, kept marring the picture. She could also be Sebastian's killer. We rode the lift up to the top, then took off along the ridges. She skied like she was born to it. Easy, smooth, and gracefully. It had been four years since I'd last been on skis, and as I struggled to keep up with her, I must have looked like a rusty snowplow. We worked our way out on the crest of one of the ridges. Let's stop here a moment. Well, that suits me fine. You winded? This is not exactly sea level. I just get used to it. You see, I really can ski, Johnny. Oh, that's an understatement. Do you have a cigarette? Yeah, sure. Here. Thanks. Isn't it beautiful up here, Johnny? Yeah. You see that little dot way down there? That is the inn. A long way down. That's what I like about skiing. Everything is so remote, so far below. When you're up here... All that down there, it it just doesn't exist anymore. It's always there when you get back, though. (laughs) You you are too practical, Johnny. But, you know, it's fun being with you. Thanks. I still can't get over it. What? Well, the coincidence that I should share your cab in Zurich and then run into you again at the Kleibach Inn. But I am glad. Aren't you? Can't say that I... (laughs) Johnny! Must have come from that other ridge behind the rocks. <coughs> Closer. We're sitting ducks on this ridge. Quick! Down the left side of it. There is a shortcut. Let's go. Keep low, Elsa. Who could be shooting at us? We'll figure that out when we get out of range. <coughs> oh. He's still right with us. We'll be out of sight in a moment. Could be a moment too late. There. We are past the shoulder. Yeah. The slope's pretty steep here. This is the quickest way. The shoulder of the ridge will keep us out of sight. Maybe. What do you mean? We get going much faster and we're going to take off. Hey, ahead of us, a cliff. Johnny, stop! What do you think I'm trying to do? Johnny, Johnny, watch out! Can't Johnny! Can't... Oh, brother. Oh, Johnny. Four feet more and I... Oh, thank heaven. This was a real great route you picked, Ilsa. Oh, I... I can't tell you how sorry I am. Sorry I didn't go over the edge. Of course not. 
I mean, I'm, I'm sorry that in the excitement, I forgot about the avalanche. Avalanche? Yes, several months ago. It took away part of the slope and left this sheer drop. Forgot about it, huh? Well, I, I just told you I did. I noticed you didn't have much trouble stopping in time. But I was behind you. Oh, yeah, that's just where you were, behind me. What are you trying to say, Johnny? Just that this is one coincidence too many, Ilsa. We just happened to stop on the top of the ridge right where I make a grade-A target. Then you just happened to forget there's a sheer drop on this shortcut you got me to take. But I explain Come on, that... we're going back to the inn. The fire feels good, doesn't it? Johnny... Johnny, what is it? What's the matter? All those things you said up on the ridge. I'm waiting, Elsa. Waiting for what? For you to open up and tell me what this is all about and how you fit into the deal. Deal? Oh, cut it out, will you? You didn't just happen to share my cab back in Zurich. The whole thing was rigged so it would look like you passed those stolen diamonds along to me. Stolen? Johnny, I don't know anything about stolen diamonds. I suppose you also don't know anything about a man named Sebastian. Yes, I know Sebastian. What has he got to what do with... What about his murder? Murder? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Why? Oh, I, I, I can't believe it. Sebastian did. Yeah. And you've already admitted you knew Sebastian. Now, let's have the rest of the story. Straight. Oh. Well, Sebastian was a friend of mine. Friend? Nothing more. He... He had asked me to share your cab at the airport and to leave my purse in it. Why did he want you to do that? I don't know. He, well, he said he was in some kind of trouble and needed help. He said if I would do that, it would help him. Ilsa, you'll have to do better than that. But I am telling you the truth. No, you... Hey, wait a minute. You claim you didn't know what kind of trouble Sebastian was in? No, he didn't tell me. You also claim you don't know anything about the diamonds? A hundred thousand dollars worth? What? I read about that in the newspapers, but... Oh, wait a moment. Are you saying that Sebastian was involved in it? Up to his ears. I'm sorry to hear that, Johnny. But you must believe me. I did not know anything about it. You're either telling the truth or you're a whale of an actress, Ilsa. I'm telling you the truth. Okay. But about that taxi cab in Zurich, I don't understand. Sebastian was trying to double-cross the rest of the outfit by negotiating with me for the return of the diamonds. But apparently there was another outfit after the diamonds. He wanted to make it look to them like he'd passed the diamonds along to oh. take the heat off. You said a man attacked you after I had left your cab. Yeah. He obviously thought you'd slip me the diamonds. Oh. So Sebastian was setting me up as a patsy on the one hand and negotiating with me on the other. Who could have killed him? Good question. Could be the outfit trying to grab the stones. Or Sebastian's own crowd found out he was trying to sell them out. And the person who shot at us up on the ridge? Same two possibilities. Which reminds me, you still haven't explained how you happened to come up here to the Kleibach Inn. Well, Sebastian told me he had unfinished business in Zurich, and he would meet me here in a few days, and we would go skiing. I see. Tell me, did you know any of Sebastian's friends? One or two, slightly. Was one of them big and powerful, thick features, almost bald? Mm, No. Why? Why? Well, he's the one who jumped me in the hotel lobby after my cab ride with you. Oh, no, no. I I am certain I would remember him the way you describe him. Oh, there was a man Sebastian spent a great deal of time with, but he was short and stocky with very thick neck. Well, that fits the description of one of the men in the robbery at the Zurich airport. Do you know his name? Why, um, Bruner, I think it was. Could it have been Gruner? Yes. Gruner. The man who sent the postcard to Sebastian. Yeah, that ties in all right. Postcard? Oh, I'll skip that. Was one of Sebastian's friends an Englishman? Mm, not that I know of. Why? Well, a fellow named Jeffrey Harris here at the hotel has been trying to strike up an acquaintance with me. Claims he thought I was old Bunny Dollar, a friend of his from London. Oh, well. Johnny, if you'll excuse me, I, I'm very tired and... Upset about this news of Sebastian. I, I think I'll go to my room. Yeah, okay, Elsa. If there's anything more I can do... Don't worry. Help you. I'll let you know. All right. I, I'll see you later. Herr Dollar? Hmm? 
Oh, Otto. Did you enjoy your skiing? Well, let's say it was real interesting. Got a question for you, Otto. Huh? As a man of experience, how do you tell if a woman is lying? <laughs> Okay, Adolfo. As an innkeeper, I learned long ago that one listens to a woman, agrees with her, smiles politely, keeps his eyes open, and believes what he wishes about her. Yeah, well, I guess that's as good advice as any. I hear, Adolfo, this letter arrived for you from Zurich by special messenger while you were... Oh, yeah, I was expecting it. Thanks, Otto. One more thing. Yeah? Did anybody else go skiing this morning? From the inn? No. I see. But the Englishman... Jeffrey Harris... What about him? He likes to climb the rocks. He went out for a while. Climbing rocks, huh? Thanks a lot. Yeah. Jeffrey Harris could be my boy, all right. But at the moment, I was more interested in the contents of the envelope Police Inspector Honiger had sent me from Zurich. I tore it open and examined the postcard inside. Expense item eight, two and a half, long distance call to Zurich and Honiger. You received the postcard, Herr Dollar? Yeah, from Gruner to Sebastian, a picture of a chalet on the side of a mountain. You say this card arrived in Sebastian's mailbox? This morning. Apparently, Gruner is unaware of Sebastian's death. Uh, what do you make of the card? Well, the chalet in the picture is sort of a small halfway house for skiers. Is it attended? No, empty most of the time. Herr Dollar, possibly the first postcard of the inn was simply for the purpose of guiding Sebastian to Kleibach. This second is perhaps a picture of the actual location of the diamonds. That's what I'm going up there to find out. The trail up the mountain started in back of the inn. I worked my way up the ridge slowly, keeping an eye on every clump of rock, just in case my friend with the rifle was still on the prowl. Near the crest, I stopped a breath. Suddenly, I spotted something moving far down the slope below me. Someone was descending from rock to rock, almost down to the inn. It was too far to tell for sure, but it looked like the Englishman, Jeffrey Harris. I started my climb again. Ten minutes later, I reached the halfway house, the place on the postcard. It was small, just a shelter, and there was no sign of life. Inside, the place was in a shambles, completely torn about. If this had been the hiding place of the stolen diamonds, somebody had sure beat me to it. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a third part of the key turns up in the form of a corpse. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.